Hello everybody and welcome to the BlueWorks Live July 2017 release preview session. I'm Margaret Thorpe, BlueWorks Live Offering Manager, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the BlueWorks Live release that's coming out this weekend on July 1st. So in this release of BlueWorks Live, we've enhanced editor productivity, provided additional support for enterprise integration, introduced the BlueWorks Live service ID, and strengthened BlueWorks Live security. So editors can now merge flows in their process diagrams by simply dragging and dropping endpoints. Overlapping lines are now clearly distinguishable within process diagrams, and images can quickly be inserted into rich text documentation. Glossary values can be imported in bulk from external sources via CSV file, and links to glossary terms are readily available. We're introducing the new BlueWorks Live service ID that provides a fit-for-purpose ID for automating reporting and user provisioning tasks. In addition, the user list and user provisioning APIs now include business units. And we've strengthened security by both introducing a higher level password policy and removing support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So let's take a closer look at, at these enhancements. First up, as I said, we've made some improvements to the editing tools that should make it faster and easier for you to model and document your processes. Recognizing that it can take quite a few mouse clicks to connect up flows within a BlueWorks Live process diagram, we've made it a lot easier in this release by giving editors the ability to drag and drop endpoints. So now you can simply drag and drop to merge alternative start events, to merge end events, connect an existing flow into an activity or gateway in another flow, connect an existing flow into another flow via an automatically generated gateway. And as with other manual layout options in BlueWorks Live, you'll be able to tell where you can drop a dragged event by whether it's highlighted in green or red. So let's take a look at how this works. Here's an example of how we would merge flows by merging alternative start events. You can see in this diagram that we've got two different start events that kick off this process depending on which trigger is received. If I drag the lower start event and drop it onto the start event in the, high, in the upper swim lane, the first one, the one that I dragged will vanish and its flow will be automatically connected to the remaining start event, as you can see here in the diagram on the lower right-hand side of the chart. A much more common action involves connecting up a flow to an activity or gateway in another flow. Today, this takes a few mouse clicks. Um, but now you can just do it in one step by dragging the end event and dropping it onto the activity or gateway that you want it connected to. As you can see in the diagram on the right hand side here, the flow line is connected and the end event is automatically deleted for you. You can also drag an end event onto a flow line and an exclusive gateway will now be automatically created and the flow will be connected to the new gateway as you can see in the diagram here on the right. We've also made it easier to tell the difference between overlapping lines. So with the new visualization, which you can see on the right here, it's easier to follow flow lines in complex diagrams without having to hover over the individual lines. You'll also see this same visualization in the printed diagrams, so it will make it easier to follow complex diagrams both online and offline. If you've ever tried to insert images into rich text documentation, then you're probably aware that this, is, this can be time consuming. <clears throat> well, we've simplified considerably, so all you need to do now is click on the Insert Image tool, browse the directory, select the image file that you want to insert, and click Done. The image file is automatically attached to the activity and inserted into the rich text. We've also made some enhancements to enable more integration with external tools and repositories. In case your organization already has an external enterprise glossary of terms in a tool like SharePoint or Calibra, we've added a feature that allows you to import glossary values into BlueWorks Live from an external source by using a CSV file. To use this feature, just open up the section of the glossary <clears throat> for the property that you want to import and click on the import button. In the example here, you can see that I'm importing system values into my glossary. Um, and notice the handy help link here where you can find documentation on this new feature. 
Now there are a few things to keep in mind when you're importing. First of all, make sure that the imported file is in the correct format. It must have a header row as the first line in the file. Here you can see that I've got a header row with the column headers for value, description, and visibility. Each value being imported must have an entry in the value column. Here you can see that I've got an entry in the value column for each value that I want to import. Now after you've selected the file that you're going to be importing, BlueWorks Live scans it to make sure that the glossary values are in the correct format and it displays any errors and warnings if it finds any. Review those errors and warnings carefully. So for example, if, the value, if a value is already in the glossary, you'll, you'll get a message telling you that. And you can choose to skip those values when the file is imported, or you could choose to merge the values in the file with the ones in the glossary. So you can see in my example here that BlueWorks Live has found a value in my import file that already exists in the glossary, and it's giving me the option to merge these duplicates, which would replace the existing value with the new one. So it's important to fix any errors and review any warnings before you import the file because once the import is complete and your glossary values have been updated, you know, any further corrections, you'll need to make them manually within the glossary itself. Now, after you've reviewed warnings and fixed any errors, BlueWorks Live will display the list of values that it's going to import from your file. And so here you can see um, in my example that it's going to import 10 values from my import file and it tells me what those are. And once I click OK, uh, BlueWorks Live is going to go ahead and complete the import and, um, and that's it. You know, like I said, if you need to change anything after that, you'll have to work directly within the glossary after the um, import has been completed. So uh, before you use this feature, I would highly recommend that you check out the documentation for it, um, which you will find in the Managing Glossary Access and Content section of the BlueWorks Live help pages under Importing Glossary Values. <clears throat> Now, just like you can get links to blueprints, decisions, activities, and other metadata within BlueWorks Live, you can now get links to glossary terms so that you can reference those in external tools and documents. Just click on the link icon next to glossary value and the link to the value will be displayed and you can copy and paste it. Now let's take a look at the service ID a new feature that provides secure delegated access for automated systems. Today, BlueWorks Live APIs only support basic auth, so username, password. And there are several issues with this that customers have brought to our attention. Um, so one of them, customers are forced to use existing licenses to create these kind of service IDs for this purpose. Um, and they typically have to grant this ID full admin permission to get to access everything in the account, which, you know, sometimes they're a little reluctant to do. And BlueWorks Live user passwords expire periodically, which causes these automated programs scripts to stop running, um, you know, if they're running kind of in the background on a weekly basis or whatever. And so then a person's got to log into the account and change the password and update the code with the new password and that's really, that's inconvenient. So to address these issues, we've created this new BlueWorks Live service ID. And this is a dedicated fit for purpose ID just for automating administrative tasks like reporting and user provisioning using the BlueWorks Live APIs. <clears throat> so the service ID does not use a password. Um, it leverages OAuth2, which uses access tokens. So instead you have a thing called a client ID and a secret. Um, service IDs never expire, but they can be revoked. Service IDs have access to the entire account, so there's no space level permissions um, need to be set up for them. But access is restricted to specific subsets of the BlueWorks Live APIs, artifact reporting and user management, and we'll take a look at how that works in a sec. So service IDs are designed for use by, you know, automated service application system programs, whatever you want to call them. And they're limited to just to API authentication and authorization. 
So that means it's not a user ID. Um, in other words, it can't be used by people to log into BlueWorks Live. Um, it doesn't consume a license. It doesn't appear in the user management tab of the admin console, nor in user groups, nor as a space participant. However, any actions performed by a service ID are visible in the BlueWorks Live activity stream, just like actions that are performed by BlueWorks Live users. So let's take a look at you know, how you would use a service ID. So first thing, the BlueWorks Live admin would have to create a service ID and obtain the credentials. So they do this by going to the BlueWorks Live admin console, account information page, they create a service ID and they download this client ID in the secret. They give it to the service ID developer that was going to be doing the development for whatever um, program, um, their whatever tasks they're wanting to automate with the, with the program. The service ID developer, they would then have to obtain an access token from the BlueWorks Live authorization server using those credentials. Once they have that token, then they can send the access token to an API. And once they've done that, then they can make whatever API calls they need to. Now, BlueWorks Live APIs can be accessed for up to an hour um, using a single access token. But if the access token expires, then you'll need to get another one. So go through these same steps. <clears throat> So let's take a look at you know, how this works in BlueWorks Live. So to create a service ID, as I said, you go to the account information tab on the admin pages. In the BlueWorks Live API section, you enable the BlueWorks Live API and create a new service ID. So only admins can create service IDs and the BlueWorks Live APIs must be enabled in order to do this. So next you need to get the credentials. So once you've opted to add a new service ID, you give it a name, description, and category. The category determines which set of APIs the service ID can access. The service ID can't be used for APIs outside of that category. User management and artifact reporting are the currently available API categories for service IDs. So when you click the Create button here on this dialog, the client credentials are downloaded to your machine. Uh, save this file and share it only with authorized personnel who's going to be implementing your automated API calls. For example, the development team that's implementing weekly reports or whatever. The service ID file can't be downloaded again. So as its owner, you're responsible for ensuring that it's used only for its intended purpose. You're also responsible for ensuring that the service ID is revoked if it's no longer required or if you think that it might be compromised. After you revoke a service ID, you can delete it. Now to authenticate, your program will need to send the client ID in secret to, to BlueWorks Live and BlueWorks Live will return a short-lived token that the system will then use to call the API. The, doc, the API documentation on the Knowledge Center describes this in great detail. So go take a look at um, this documentation to learn more about how you exactly you can obtain the access token and call the API. Um, there are a number of examples in the documentation for the artifact reporting and user management APIs. And in addition, there is also documentation for this feature on the BlueWorks Live help pages. So just look under the administrator section for the service ID page, um, as you can see here. So that's the new service ID feature. And as I said, we've strengthened security as well. And we've introduced a higher level password policy. So the old high is the new medium. And this new password policy, it differs from the previous high password policy in that passwords must contain at least 10 characters rather than eight. Um, and they must contain at least one uppercase letter and one lowercase letter. And they also must contain at least one number and one special character. So that's how they differ from the previous high um, password policy. And we strongly encourage admins to up, upgrade accounts to the new high security level. Um, we're certainly doing it internally. It's not much fun for users, but it, it's definitely more secure. Now this isn't news 
um, we emailed all the ad, all of our customer admins about this a couple of months ago. But I just wanted to remind everybody that TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are no longer supported. So as of this release, we're only supporting version 1.2 of TLS. Um, so, you know, just to summarize what we already communicated in, in this email that I'm referring to, you know, all major browsers now support TLS 1.2 by default. TLS 1.2, it's the latest version, it's the most secure, and TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are now considered obsolete. So if your browser isn't configured to use TLS 1.2 by uh, July 1st, you won't be able to access BlueWorks Live. You'll receive a browser error telling you to check your browser TLS settings. Um, and if you get that, you'll need to either upgrade to a more recent browser version, or you'll need to configure your browser to use TLS 1.2. And for more details on how to determine whether or not a browser is configured to use TLS 1.2, um, check with your BlueWorks Live account admin uh, because they received this information a couple of months ago. Um, otherwise, uh, it will also be available on the um, July release blog, so you can check it there as well. So that is security, and that's everything I wanted to, to discuss for this release. Um, so in summary, we've enhanced editor productivity. Um, editors can now easily merge flows in their process diagrams by dragging and dropping end events. Um, overlapping lines are easy to tell apart now within process diagrams, and images can be quickly inserted into rich text documentation. We also provide are providing additional support for enterprise integration. So glossary values can now be imported in bulk from external sources via a CSV file, and links to glossary terms are readily available. We're introducing this new BlueWorks Live service ID, which is a fit-for-purpose ID for automating reporting and user provisioning tasks that leverages OAuth 2, and we've strengthened BlueWorks Live security both by introducing a higher level password policy and removing support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So this is the summary of the release and um, what I'm going to do is take you all off of broadcast mode now so that we can I can answer any questions that you might have. So thanks so much.